Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here. And today I am going to show you how to do a double fan full card. And I came across this card this week. Um, it was a card by uh, Sam Calcott. And uh, if you want to see her original card, um, over on my blog post, if you click on over, um, go down below in the description of this video, um, I have a link to her card um, on my blog so you can see it. And I loved her card, but it was a card that is larger than we usually make at Stampin' Up! We usually do make a card that fits in um, an envelope designed for a four and a quarter by five and a half card front. And um, because so many of our cards like this, nothing against bigger cards, but um, our envelopes are also designed for that. And so I wanted to create that same card. So I played around with the measurements a little bit and I came up with a card that has a four and a quarter by five and a half front. So it will fit inside a medium envelope and I think it looks just as good. And so I designed my card and here it is. This is the double fan fold right here. And um, it sits really nicely, um, about like this. Um, when it spreads out, it's like this. Um, and then the back space right here, I haven't actually put a panel back here, um, but you can put a panel back there of just white cardstock, and that's where you would write your greeting for your card. And I just love the way this card turned out. This is using the jar of flower stamps. You can barely see my jar here. There we go. I'm trying to get it into the light with, um, uh, without uh, obliterating it. Um, my lighting is a little funny this morning. I um, It's a very overcast, dark day, so I have a lot of lights shining down, but it's still not enough. Um, anyway, jars in general, um, if it's a clear glass jar, of course, you don't want it to be super bright. So um, that's why it's also a little lighter. But I know you're going to love this card. And I have a project sheet for you um, that I will mail out tomorrow on Saturdays is when I um, mail out my project sheets to my email list subscribers. And this one's great because it has all the measurements for the different panels and stuff. And I will go over the measurements in the video if you don't want to get my project sheet so that you can do it directly off the video. You can take notes if you want to. But if you want my project sheet, make sure you subscribe to my email list below. The, just, uh, the link is down below. Um, and then um, I also, when you subscribe, you will also be able to access um, my past project sheets. Um, right now I have them going back a year because I started doing them in October of last year. Eventually I'm going to start taking off um, the older ones, um, but uh, for now I have all of them still available. And um, you can, um, in the welcome email, uh, you'll be given a, a link where you can grab those if you want them. All right, guys. Oh, I wanted to sh uh, give a shout out to my mother-in-law. I'm not sure if she's watching this morning or is watching later on, but happy birthday. And um, I hope you have a wonderful day. We will call you later. Um, I know we didn't want to wake you up too early in the morning, but um, I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, good morning. Oh, and I have someone who's watching me for the first time. Welcome, Lisa from Australia. Uh, that's so cool. I love it when people uh, watch me from around the world because my family is kind of an international family. Briefly, I have um, my roots are uh, from Germany. My parents were German. Um, my husband's family was from Chile. And um, I grew up, my husband and I both grew up in Canada. Our son was born in Canada. And uh, we now live in the United States. So I feel like <laughs> I feel like there's like this confluence of different cultures in our family. So it always makes me smile when I see someone from a different country. So welcome and welcome everyone from the US and Canada too. Um, uh, I'm happy, happy that you're here. It makes me, um, I love reading comments as I, as I do this because it does enrich 
my experience. And if you have any questions or comments along the way, please, please interject. I will um, go back and read the comments afterwards. Okay, I think we need to get started because there's, um, it's not a complicated card, but there's a few pieces that go into it. And the nice thing about this card is that you can leave some of um, the steps out. You don't necessarily have to add the designer series paper and your card front can be simpler. I just want to explain to you how to do the, to do the fold so that you can do it yourself um, in your home. All right, I'm going to switch over my cameras and we will get started with this card. All right, let's talk about this again. Project sheet going in, out in the mail to email list subscribers on Saturday. Let me pop this over here so I can follow along. I use the Jar of Flowers stamp set for the front right here. You can see the, the flowers, the stems, and the jar. And then I use the Here's a Card stamp set for the greeting down here at the bottom. Okay? So let me set these aside and out of the way. So they're out of the way. Okay, so let's start off and we're going to create the card base first because I think that's the most important part. And I'm going to use a slightly different colored paper. I'm still going to use the same paper pack. Let me just grab that right here. This is the Ornate Garden Specialty Paper. Gorgeous paper. Um, I'm using some neutral patterns out of there. Um, for my card, I use this old olive pattern, but today we're gonna do a mint macaron card base and some of the mint macaron paper in that collection, just so you can see how you can use other papers in that same collection. Let me set this aside and I'm gonna grab my piece of card um, stock. This is going to become my card base and this piece measures eight and a quarter by five and a half. So if you're used to doing cards that start with an eight and a half base, keep in mind this is eight and a quarter, not eight and a half um, by five and a half. And I really like to score on my scoring board. So I'm going to bring that in to the picture and you're going to put one of the long sides up at the top and we are gonna score at the one and three eighths inch mark, the two, just double check, two and three quarter inch mark, the five and a half inch mark, and then the six and seven eighths inch mark. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, we have to score an X from here to here and from here to here on both sides. Let me just show you up a little closer. So we're going from here to here and here to here. So the second score mark in to this corner, second score mark into this corner, and then we repeat for the other side. So one thing I like to do with my um, scoring tool is I like to darken the six inch score groove with a Sharpie so that I can see it really well and line things up. So I'm going to show you how I do it on my scoring board and then I'm going to show you how I do it on my trimmer. So I'm going to take this point up here at the top and then the second score line in at the bottom, align those up and then score down. Okay, so you can see how that scores. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Second score mark in, opposite corner, and score down. So you can see that. Let me show you how that works on the paper trimmer. Okay, so here I have our Stampin' Up! paper trimmer. And instead of doing a score groove, we're going to line up here, um, right here on this, um, the track, okay? So what we're gonna do is line up the corner and the second score mark in on the track. We're going to bring it down, make sure it still lines up, and then we're taking our scoring blade, not our cutting blade, and we're going to score that. So you can see, oh, my lighting's so bad this morning. You could see that it scored it. So we'll do the same for this one. Just line it up on the track. Second score mark in to the nearest opposite corner. And then, all right. 
Okay, so we have this baby all ready and now we need to fold it. So pay attention to how I fold this because I can make it can make your life easier or harder depending on how you fold it because you want to fold your straight folds one way and then flip over and then uh, fold them in um, again. So that helps it all come together. So we're going to do the straight folds first. So we're going to start on the side and we're going to fold in once. Use my bone folder to fold this down, unfold, and then we're going to fold inward on that second fold. Okay, so basically inward and then inward again, and then we'll do the same for the other side, inward, unfold, and then come inward again. These are the straight folds, okay? So inward, 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 okay? Now we're gonna flip this piece of cardstock over, okay? And now we're gonna do the diagonal folds and we're gonna do inward, inward again. So inward along the diagonal, use the bone folder, inward along the diagonal, use the bone folder, other side, inward along the diagonal, and then we're gonna go inward again. All right. So now I'm gonna work over on the side. I'm gonna bring the side next to me because that's easier to fold. So this is the way the card goes, but I'm gonna bring the side in. So what we're gonna do is we're going to bring in these triangles and we're gonna fold them down like this. Okay, can you see that? So this naturally wants to come up right here and we're gonna bring them in like that, okay? And you can do the same thing for the other side. This, this fold right here naturally wants to come in like this. So fold them in like that. So now we have something that looks like this and then we need to fold these back like this. And I got a little bit of ink on here, but guess what? That's not gonna matter because later on, I am going to cover this piece so that's how the fold works. And this is the front and these two panels that fold back, this is the back side of the card, okay? And then when this card sits up, it sits up really nicely like that. Of course, you can't see that very well, but um, this is the flat version, but it kind of bounces up like that. But I wanna show you, let me grab my envelope. It looks really big right now, but it's going to fit inside a medium envelope. So what I like to do, actually, I don't have one right now, but I'll, I'll kind of pretend. Um, when I'm mailing this card, it's got a lot of bulk to it. So I take another piece of light cardstock. I usually use Whisper White and I cut a piece to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I kind of protect the back of the card like this and then this will allow me to kind of just slide this in to the card base and this back piece of cardstock just kind of helps keep everything solid now the only thing this is like four and a quarter ish okay so you're gonna have these little points that kind of stick out so when you fold over you'll see just a little bit of pointing out right here but it it does fit in with not too much trouble and it and it works into our medium size stampin up um, envelopes and i believe i have our medium envelopes on the supply list so if you need them you can grab them okay i just wanted to show you that that is how it all fits together now we need to decorate this so I'm trying to think. I'm going to use my scoring board again. And we're going to create, um, we're going to decorate these side panels up. So I've cut some beautiful paper. Look at the gold pattern from that paper I told you about. And these panels measure two and a quarter inches by five inches. And you need two of them. I've already scored one of them. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to take one of the short sides and score down at the one and one eighth inch mark. And then you're going to line this up either on your scoring board on the six inch score groove that you've darkened, or you're going to go back to your stamp and trimmer and you can definitely use that groove as well. So I'm just going to score an X from corner to corner and from corner to corner again. Okay. So we're, why do I do that first? It's so I have guidelines. So when I'm cutting, I can see where to cut. Like I could easily cut from diagonal to diagonal, but then I would have trouble finding the center point right here. So I score first and then cut to make things easier for me. So I know where I have to cut. I cut along all those score lines now. So first of all, I'm going to line this up again on the diagonal and this time I'm going to cut from corner to corner okay um, now I have if I was just scoring diagonally I would lose my my um, cut area but now because of the score lines all I have to do is um, line up the score lines on the diagonal so I do this one next Okay, and then I'm going to kind of piece them together over here so I know where everything goes. And then I'm going to do this one here. Line this one up along the score lines. Cut. Okay. And then I've got these two triangles and they need to be cut down the center. So it's really easy to line them up at the top and have that point come down the center. So I'll do that and cut and I'm just kind of keeping them in order so I can piece them back together in order this is a really busy pattern though so I don't think you would notice if um, the pattern was in a different order okay so I've cut all of those I'm going to keep this one over here and then I'm going to do this one over here and I'm just going to line this oh want to do the diagonal first always do the diagonal first because it's easier okay diagonal i'm lining up the score lines and i should have mentioned that i had scored um i, cut, I had scored the other panel earlier so i already had them and then let's do um this one right here Cut. And then we'll do the triangles. And the last set of triangles. Okay. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open this up. I'm going to take my Tombow and I'm going to glue all of these pieces onto my panel. So I'm going to just take the Tombow. This is a step that you can omit. If you want to, you do not have to add this fancy paper on here. So you can decide how fancy you want to make this card. I glued this down and I want it down just a little bit. Okay, it's not perfect. <laughs> Sometimes I press down before I uh, am ready to press down. But you just need to glue on all of these panels. In fact, I have left it so that I don't glue on this panel right here because I kind of like this um, space to be blank right here. So you can decide whether you want to adhere all of them down. You can decide if you want to flip over some of your paper because maybe um, you like some of your paper flipped to the other side. But I kind of like I kind of like not being too busy 
like the powder not to be too busy. This is just kind of very elegant. Okay, I'm going to leave this panel off and then we're going to come to the other side. And we're going to glue all of these panels down. This just takes a little bit of time just to get them on here, but it's not hard. And then I'm going to come in here and glue this one down. Just a few more. And then we'll work on our front piece. I hope you guys are all doing well today. The weekend is coming up. All right. Okay, so doesn't that look pretty? All that pretty shimmery um, paper. And like I said, you could put this one on here if you wanted to absolutely go ahead. I'm leaving those ones off so you can choose what you want to do. All right, let's set this aside and let's do our card front. So for my card front, I'm going to use a piece of um, a die piece that I cut earlier. And I use the, these are called the Ornate Layers dies. And this panel here really fits well down the center piece right here. So I really like that die cut. So that's what I'm going to use. But if you do not have these dies, you could also use just a plain whisper white panel. And let me give you the measurements for that. This measures two and a half inches by five and a quarter inches. Okay, and it would just fit right um, centered on here. So it looks really pretty just as well. But if you wanna go a little fancier, like we're gonna to do today, I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to do my majority of my stamping in Early Espresso ink. And I'm going to use that jar of flower stamp set and I just wanted um, sunflowers right now because that it's that time of year. Um, the one thing with this stamp is, I where where did it go? Um, when I first stamped the stamp, I stamped it the wrong way around. I stamped it like this for some reason. I don't know why, but if you look at the cover of the case, you will see how to stamp this. And I kind of use this line right here. This one kind of comes down like this, which you can definitely do, but I kind of angled it a little bit like this to create kind of a straight line right there. So just ink this up really well with your early espresso. In fact, I'm gonna stand up to stamp this so it can really get a good stamping. And for this one, I would like to line up my left side with this um, sunflower over here. And then it reaches really close to the top. I kind of want my sunflowers a little bit more centered. So on this side, some of my um, stamping is coming off the edge by design on purpose because I want my sunflower piece to kind of be a little bit straighter. <clears throat> straighter. Then I'm gonna come in with my stem piece, also in Early Espresso, and I'm just going to stamp those stems centered right beneath my flowers, like that. And you'll see right here, there is a little teeny bit of a gap right there, but don't worry about that, because that's where our jar is going to come in. Oh, and I still need my Early Espresso. So let me grab my Pool Party ink pad and the jar stamp ink this up and now i'm going to angle or line up the top of my jar with that gap and center that right down there okay and then finally this is from the here's a card it's the happy birthday and i'm going to ink this up and just squeeze that right on the bottom of the card like that. 
So that is basically how I do the stamping for the card. And now that all that is left is coloring. So I'll show you how I colored this card. And I start off with my greenery and I'm using my Mossy Metal Light. Use the bullet tip and I'm going to come in and do all the stems as I come through here. Just follow them up one at a time. I find it easier to kind of start on one end and follow up all the stems to make sure that I get all of them. If I don't do that, sometimes I end up wondering where's the stem and where is the white space? So I just kind of like to follow them up, usually starting at the bottom. Not coming this way. Okay, so I just finished doing all the stems. There's not a whole lot of shading that can be done. Um, then I want to do the water also. I want to kind of create water in here. So I'm going to use my pool party light and I'm going to pick a line part way into the stems and I'm just going to decide that's where my water mark is. And then from there, I'm just going to color downwards. This is very subtle, but with a light pool party, but water is pretty subtle. So, you know, it's just there. It's not, it's not overwhelming it, but if you look closely, you're going to be able to see that I have a water line right in there. Okay. Uh, back to my green again. So there's some greenery here. I'm just going to hit this little stem and then over on this side there's a couple of little stems I'm going to hit and then there's this kind of fern piece so I go up the center and I kind of hit this like this and come in like that and I'm just going to go over top of this stem piece here like that all right next purple this is Highland Heather Dark and I'll come in with the bullet point on this as well. Hit this little flower down below. And I'll hit this. Okay, and there's some little purple flowers here that I'm going to do. Just adds a little balance. And then I'm going to come in and do this flower up here in Poppy Parade light. It does, it's not too overwhelming if I use the light and it's a nice color for fall. And I hear comments popping, which I will get back to in a moment. Once I finish this part. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with my soft suede and I'm going to do the center part of this red flower. And then I'm going to do all of the centers of the sunflowers in soft suede. And this is the light soft suede. Okay. We used to sell our blends in um, individually and in pairs, but now they're only available in pairs. So um, I have them listed on my supply list um, as pairs, um, but when you go to color, make sure you use um, the light or the dark, um, depending on what you think. This is the Mango Melody Dark. So then I'm just gonna come in and just hit all my petals with this. I love coloring with Stampin' Blends. They're so awesome because they're really bright and you don't have that little mark that you normally do with regular markers. Like when you lift up, there's that little dark mark. Uh, these are really easy for beginners um, too. 
and I am absolutely no expert, but I love them. They do make me look like I am between the stamped images, which already provide shading, and these alcohol markers called Stamp and Blends. They make me look really good. They do. All right. So one thing I do go in and do after I've finished all of these, I add a little bit of a, a ring around the sunflower. There is some natural shading there. So I'm just going to come in and just darken right around the flower center just a little bit. And you'll notice when I did the soft sway, uh, centers. I actually left the um, centers white. Um, I didn't color on them just to add kind of a, a highlight on there. So that is how I colored this little guy. And I just wanted to show you also what it would look like if I did it on a regular panel. Okay, so there's the difference. Maybe I'll hold them up to the camera. So you can just see the detail is it's a little bit different. You know, this one looks nice as well, but since I colored this one on the special die cut, I am going to go ahead and add this to my front. So just add this with a little bit of Tombow. Okay, and then now it will cover up my little ink smudge. I don't know how that got on there. It must have been somewhere on my work surface. Okay, so just center this on here. And then one other thing that I want to do is add some ribbon to the front of the card. And um, the ribbon that I used is called, let me find it, it is called the Ornate Garden Combo Ribbon Pack. And this is great. Like this paper that I used um, has kind of some ribbon that matches it. And this is an old olive and I believe this is um, Calypso Coral in color. But it really goes well with um, the ribbon we have here. I decided not to use the old olive ribbon for this particular card. I, I'll show you what that would look like. This is what it would look like. It doesn't look bad, but I decided to go with a pop of different color. I'm going to use the Calypso Coral ribbon for this card, just so it doesn't clash with the shades. Okay, so I'll use a little mini glue dot, and I've pre-tied my bow. Oh, I'm almost out of mini glue dots, but I'll stick this knot right down on the mini glue dot, lift up, and I'm going to add this right here. Okay. And then I'm going to grab my Gilded Gems and my Take Your Pick tool, which is buried under stuff. Right here. I need to find a place where this is a little handier. And I'm <clears throat> going to add a few of these Gilded Gems down here. Okay, one right here. And one up top here. And then one more up here. That will just add a little bit of bling. And guess what? It picks up the gold color in the foil right here. So it looks really fancy and beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. So let me bring my two cards in and let's move some of my stuff out of the way. So let me fold this back in. Put this back in. And then let me fold this one back in. So there you go. There are the two cards. And I don't know which one you like better, the mint macaron one here on the side with this Calypso coral bow, or the old olive one here with the old olive bowl. Bow? Oh, I can't speak this morning. Um, but they're both nice, right? So you can use different papers in that paper collection and um, that will give you variety if you want to make um, different cards from the same pack. But it's just such a beautiful fall birthday card, don't you think? I just love this fold. It is so cool. Anyway, I'm going to come back to you. I heard comments popping and I am off here.
to read them. Hey, I'm back. I'm back without my card. Okay. Hello, everyone. Oh, yeah. Paula's saying everyone's really quiet this morning. <laughs> yes, we are quiet. Um, good morning. Um, I have someone here, Honey Bee Stamping Hi, this is here from Florida. Um, Paula says she's never watched me before. Well, thank you for watching me today. She's watching me from Wyoming. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, uh, and, and people are having conversations about the terrible wind that passed through. I hope you guys were all okay. Um, oh my goodness. Lots of people um, with power outages. I'm sorry about power outages. I, um, we've had a couple of power outages here. Um, uh, we had one uh, earlier on this summer and uh, it was a little bit of a pain. So if you have to be without power for a few days, I, I sympathize with you. It's not fun. Um, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm glad that you love my card, Lisa. Um, Let's see if there's any other. Um, uh, so someone says they've made this fold before. Well, that's cool. I only saw it this week. So I have not seen it before, before maybe because it's called a double fan fold and maybe it was called something else before and I didn't even know it. But um, the person that I saw was Sam Cal Calcutt. Um, who did this card and so I just did it with I redid the measurements so that it would fit into a four and a quarter by five and a half um, inch um, uh, so it would be that front four and a quarter by five and a half and it would fit inside a medium envelope so I hope you enjoy this card um, I if you need any of the supplies to make this card I'm um, just uh, pop on over to my blog look down in the description of this video that's where all the information I have is there's um, the link to my blog there's a link um, to my host code there's um, a link to everything that you you need my contact information so uh, please if you have a comment or question please uh, post it down below um, in the comment section and I will get to them afterwards. If you love my videos and you want to subscribe to my channel, look for me. I'm hovering in the corner, my little photos hovering. Click on that and that will take you to the subscribe page. And if you um, click on the bell as well, that um, will give you notifications when I go live. Um, I This is a normal segment that I do every week. Um, Friday morning at 10 a.m. on YouTube. So um, if you ever want to set a reminder for yourself, go go find me at 10 a.m. on Friday morning. And these videos, of course, are recorded, so you can come back to them later. Um, and uh, is there anything else I need to tell you? No. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, enjoy and stay safe and well. Thanks so much for joining me this morning. Take care. Bye-bye.